Welcome to day 102 of our daily scripture reading and encouragement. Today we're going to cover 2 Samuel 17 and 18. And then we're going to jump over into Luke 21 and cover verses 1 through 19. Today we're going to spend most of our time in the New Testament, but I do want to briefly touch on 2 Samuel. As we pick up, Absalom has mobilized an army to go after his father David. He's trying to kill his father. David has spies who warn him. They help David get ready to attack and defeat Absalom's men. Absalom is killed in the battle. The news is reported back to David, and David mourns. There was a set of events. It was put in motion by David's failures. But that set of events has now resulted in his son's death. And this is the second son who's died because of these events. This is a a disaster for David, for his household, for his kingdom. He's now lost two sons. And I believe he's mourning. Obviously, he's mourning because he lost his son. But his mourning is very deep because he knows this ultimately stems from something that was his fault. So I know we've talked about this the past couple of days, and I don't want to keep hammering on the same points over and over, but for me, I need to hammer on this same point over and over. It's just a reminder that we always need to think through our actions. It's hard to think through our actions in the moment sometimes, but we need to think through our actions to realize that the consequences that come down the road could be something that would be disastrous for us. And for me, if I keep that in mind, it helps encourage me to make better decisions in the moment. We're going to go ahead and flip over into Luke chapter 21. As we come off yesterday, Jesus has just chastised the leaders of religious law. He's just called them out for how they want to look so good. And he's done this many times, but he's just called them out again on how they want to sit at the head of the table, how they love seats of honor, how they cheat widows out of property, and then pretend to be religious by making long prayers. He's calling them hypocrites, saying they're going to be severely punished. Now he's about to give the disciples a warning about some things that are going to happen in the future that are not good. But he takes just a brief moment, and he notices this widow giving her offering at the temple. It says, while Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts into the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow is given more than all the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. So he's sandwiched in between chastising the religious leaders And talking about the persecution the disciples are going to endure. And then talking about some end times prophecy. Jesus takes time to point out that this poor widow comes and drops her offering in. This meant something to Jesus. He saw her heart. Everything Jesus has asked us to do is is about cleansing our heart and making our hearts right. And he never said that the rich people that were giving money, that their offering was bad. He simply made the statement that she, giving a very little, really ultimately gave more than anyone else did. She gave faithfully from her heart. She gave all she had. And I think this is an important story or Jesus wouldn't have taken that short little break to throw this in here. But I think the encouragement for all of us is that when we give and we are expected to give, it's something that we don't like to talk about in the church Or we don't like it when pastors talk about it because we think they talk too much about money or whatever. I know in our church, I don't even talk about money. And I probably should more. But ultimately, God and Jesus, they want us to give out of a thankful heart, a faithful heart, an obedient heart. We are told by Scripture to give. And we see here that when this poor widow gave what little she had, Jesus took notice And he praised her. He's just come off chastising the religious leaders for what they're not doing right. He takes time to uplift and point out and encourage what the poor widow has done. See, it goes against everything in society. Society says, and a lot of churches unfortunately say, cater to the big giver. But see, Jesus realized the big giver is usually giving a little out of a lot that they have. And he's saying, pay attention to that widow that gave everything because she gave more. Ultimately, by giving what little she had, she gave more. 
So guys, I think this is a crucially important story for us to realize what kind of heart Jesus expects us to give from. If you find yourself only being able to give a little bit, don't be discouraged. Jesus sees you. If you are poor, you don't have much left over to give. And I'm not talking about someone who lives a selfish life and spends their money on everything else and then just has a little bit left over for Jesus. I'm talking about people who are faithfully trying to give, but they only have a little left over to give, but they give that little. Jesus is watching you. He notices you. And don't think you're not giving enough. Don't think that your little bit's not helping your church or that ministry or whatever you're giving it to. Know that Jesus sees you and he sees your heart. And be encouraged that the little you give pleases him and makes him so happy because he sees it. Then Jesus moves on to talk and warn his disciples and ultimately us about the future and the end. This next set of of verses, Jesus is giving them some signs, some things they're going to go through, some things that are going to happen and the destruction of Jerusalem, the temple is going to be destroyed after he, after he dies. After he dies, is buried, is resurrected, ascends to heaven. There's going to be a time that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed and he's warning them. But at the same time, there's a lot of end times prophecy in here as well. But Jesus starts out in his warning and he says, Don't believe everyone that comes talking about the end. He says, don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and saying the time has come. Don't believe them. I can remember being a kid and someone predicting the biggest earthquake that was going to destroy our city and it never happened. He gave a date and everyone prepared for it. Everybody was so scared because he spoke with such authority. It was supposed to be this gigantic natural disaster that could spark end of time prophecy. And it never happened. And see, Jesus was warning the disciples, but he's also warning us. There are people in our society today that every day are claiming we are in the end. And we may be, but there's a point Jesus gets to. So just bear with me. I'm not saying looking at the end times signs is not important because Jesus does tell us to look up and be aware. But bear with me today as we go through what I think Jesus is telling his disciples. He says, don't believe everyone. He says things are going to get crazy, they're going to get bad, but don't panic. See, this is where I think he's starting to have a message for us. Don't panic. When you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. He says, yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. The nation will go to war against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes and famines and plagues in many lands. So he's telling, these are terrifying things. He says there will be terrifying things that happen and miraculous signs in the heavens. But before all this happens, there's going to be a great persecution. So he's telling them, I mean, he is warning them. You're going to be dragged into synagogues and prisons. You're going to stand before trial before kings and governors because you're my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So first he says, all these bad things are going to happen. Don't listen to everybody that comes and says they're me or says the end is here. First, Don't panic. In other words, don't have fear about the time you live in. Number two, when there's persecution, that is going to be your opportunity to tell those persecuting you about me. Do you get where he's going here? He's giving them a layout of what they're supposed to do. Verse 14 says, so don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you. For I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. So Jesus tells them, when you go through persecution, this is going to be your your time to tell them about me. I still have a plan. And he warns them, even those closest to your parents, your brothers, your relatives, your friends, they're going to betray you. They may even kill some of you. Everyone will hate you because you follow me. But then here's the important thing. But not a hair on your head will perish by standing firm. You will win your souls. So Jesus is telling them, guys, you're living in a really crazy time. Don't panic. Don't have fear. Tell people about me and trust me to give, trust the Holy Spirit to give you the words to say and stand firm. So Jesus is telling them, again, there's two fold 
There's two things happening in the scripture. He's telling them about the fall of Jerusalem they're going to see in their lifetime. And he's warning us about end times. And we're going to dig more into that in tomorrow's scripture. And, and it's no doubt we live in a crazy time right now. And there's many people that think, and, and I am one of those people that think we could be living in very close to the end time. But it doesn't really matter what I think. It doesn't really matter what those other end time prophets think. Because Jesus says in those times, don't panic. Tell people about me when you're persecuted and stand firm. So that's the message of encouragement I want to give you today. I'm not here to tell you if this scripture is predicting that we live in the end times today or not. That's something you pray about. You listen to other end time people who are prophets. I'm not a prophet in that respect. I'm an encourager. And I'm seeing in scripture that Jesus told people that no matter how crazy it gets, but you can look at our world. Once again, I've already said this, but you can look at our world and say it's getting very crazy right now. And Jesus says, no matter how crazy our world gets, I use this term often, here's your blueprint. So guys, I'm telling you today, no matter how things, how crazy things get in your personal life, with your family, with your job, with our society, with our country, with our economy, with a virus, with another iteration of a virus, with vaccine mandates, with whatever the craziness is, natural disaster signs in the heavens, I have the blueprint right here in Luke chapter 21. So my encouragement to you today is don't panic. Don't have fear. Tell people about Jesus when you're put in those times of persecution. We're promised persecution, guys, but we should embrace it and look forward to it because that Jesus says he'll give us the right words to say. And finally, stand firm. I'm going to add another piece to it. Be like the widow. Be like the widow who's willing to give up everything to please Jesus. Hope you're encouraged today, and I hope you have a great day.